Now, for some, the journey to motherhood isn't usually uh, one that is without its bumps in the road. Um, but for our next guest, Frankie's sister, Tor Cook, uh, the route to becoming a mum was filled with heartbreak, grief and devastation. Tor suffered four miscarriages, eventually going through IVF during the pandemic. And uh, Tor joins us now. Hi, Tor. Hi, hi. Well, you've got beautiful twin boys now, and I have to tell you that Frankie has already claimed one as her own because she just said, Rafferty looks like me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he does, though, doesn't he, Tor? He does. He's not yours, though. No, he's not. I mean, I, I would take one. She was indulging you there. <laughs> I yes, know, she, does, she was. He does. She does, she does. <laughs> so, so, Tora, it, it's lovely that there is a happy ending to this, but, my goodness, you've been through the mill um, in getting your lovely boys. It uh, goes back to sort of 2017, is that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, got married in 2017 and obviously did the normal, we'll get married and then have babies straight after. And it didn't quite work out that way. Yeah, so when yeah. did you begin to realise that it wasn't going to be as straightforward as, as everyone hopes it will be? Well, um, we fell pregnant quite quickly and that's something that luckily I could do. Um, and I think it was in like the October um, we found out we were pregnant for the first time. And it was quite early that I miscarried um, with that pregnancy. Um, and obviously, you know that you've heard of people that have miscarriages, although it's not overly talked about. Um, and I think because of this whole, you don't do anything until you've had three, the first one I was a little bit like, oh, it was horrible, but it happens to people, so we'll see, we'll see what happens next time. Um, and then next time it happened, and then next time. So I don't think at first we thought there was a problem, we just thought it was normal, which is quite sad, really. I, I mean, you said, you know, you don't do anything until you've had three miscarriages. I wasn't aware of that. Is that sort of a policy? Mm. <sighs> Pretty much, yeah. It's, um, so it's actually something that I'm working with, with Tommy's charity, um, to kind of stop that. And, and they don't look into it on the NHS until you've had three. And that's not really just the NHS. It's kind of in a lot of countries as well. Um, because they are so common and your body does all different things, they say that it until you've had three miscarriages um and actually one is bad enough mm. and the impact it has on you mentally and physically um we're kind of trying to stop that and hope that people will look into it after you've just had one now um how did your husband react i mean because people often think how you know how sad it is for the woman but people forget that the man also has part of it because i lost a baby and my husband suffered really badly kept thinking it was something we'd done um, and that and that, so how was he? Yeah, I mean, I think that is the thing like they people do forget that, they're that as well um, and He just hated that it was me that my body that was going through it obviously mentally for him He he kind of tried to stay strong for us and um, and he was sad. We tried not to blame ourselves um, Which I know is really easy to say yeah. not that easy to do um, but I think he just wanted to take my pain away, my physical pain of everything that I was going through. Um, and actually, Frankie was really good at checking in with him and just making sure that we kind of didn't forget about him. Oh. We love James. <laughs> He's a good egg. <laughs> so, Tor, you found out that the cause was something called NK cells and in your case they were elevated. Could you explain a little bit more about that? Because I know there are lots of women out there that have maybe never heard of that before. Yeah, it's not a test that they do that widely. Um, and actually, it's not something that a lot of people even still believe in. It's quite a new thing. Um, but what it is essentially is that your cells are attacking your body, um, your fetuses. So they think it's a foreign body. So it's good in the sense that if you get sick, if I, like, I never get sick because my body fights anything foreign that comes in. Um, but it just meant that when I fell pregnant, it was fighting the pregnancies. Right. Um, and you have to have a blood test that gets sent off to another country um, to check if you've got that. So I think you have to go private for that test. I don't think they do that on the NHS at the moment. I mean, I how was it from a sister point of view? Because you know, your kids would be small and, yeah. and Tor's trying to get pregnant. I mean, how did the two of you manage that? It was, it was difficult. I think for kind of for both of us, we've always been really close and I think Tor kind of always knew that I was going to settle down and have babies quite at quite a young age anyway. Um, and then it wasn't really until 
she was ready to have kids that then and then going through her struggles that it was really hard I didn't always know what the right thing was to say and and, and I would often feel guilty being around her with my boys because there was one point wasn't there tour where we came over to Bermuda to see you and um, you were pregnant at the time and then you miscarried the baby while we were there. Mm. And as much as you actually said that it was nice that we were there as a distraction, but I couldn't help but feel yeah. guilty almost that I yeah. was there kind of rubbing Tor's face in my kids. But yeah. I mean, mm. I don't know, you didn't feel like that really, did you? No, I didn't feel like that at all. It was actually really nice to have them as a distraction, if you want it. And I'm close close with them and going through it all it's just nice to take my mind off of it and have family around me um but I think it is hard people don't know what to say to people when they've had miscarriages whether you're really close with them or not and I think like the normal things that like people get annoyed about are things that oh what will happen next time and like oh but we don't know if it will it's just more kind of being compassionate and just saying like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm here or something like that is, is probably the easiest thing to do. Yeah, that's really useful, I think, for people out there who are, you know, have experienced that or someone close to them is experiencing that. But you managed to go through IVF during a pandemic and you've got these two <laughs> beautiful babies. So what was that experience like, especially during this pandemic? Crazy. Um, I'm definitely one of the lucky ones because I know a lot of people's treatments got cancelled and mine had started before the pandemic really hit. So it was just nuts. Like we were going in and out of London daily, which was like a ghost town. It was crazy. Um, having a temperature checked. James wasn't allowed to come into any of the appointments. Oh. Um, it, it kind of helped us in a way because James actually got stuck in the UK. So I got him to, got, had him with me for longer than I would have if, there wouldn't have been a pandemic so in a way it was kind of a blessing in disguise for us um but it was hard and and like a lot of women have had their husbands not with them a long way through even till like just about till they give birth and then they come in through this pandemic so it's been really hard and it's been a funny time um but i know i am one of the lucky ones that managed to have my treatment and i managed to still oh, go into oh, london no. daily <laughs> I think as well, um, it was quite hard because Tor had been through this whole thing, this big build-up of, you know, so many, all this sad time of having all these miscarriages. And, and as a family and as Tor's friends, we were all kind of going through that with her. Yeah. And then she had these gorgeous little bubbers and then no one could come and see them. It was like this big build-up, this big lead-up. And I think that's happened to so many new mums where you haven't been able to have all the visits and yeah. everybody yeah. seeing them. It's so difficult. Yeah. Yeah. They're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'd waited that long to be pregnant and actually I never got to like go out and show off my bump growing I never really got to dress my bump which sounds to some people probably really silly and insignificant but actually like I'm really sad that nobody got to see my bump grow and I never got to like wear cute new outfits with my bump because it's probably the only time I'm going to have one and I was just stuck in the house kind of sat on the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but those two boys, they're oh. absolutely gorgeous, they're Tor. So absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> uh, listen, thanks very much for joining us this morning. And I'm so glad we've got a happy ending to, to report there. Um, and you're right, it does look like you, the wee one. Yeah. You think yeah, so? Yeah, I think this is probably <laughs> the longest I've spoken to her on FaceTime, because normally <laughs> I just ring her and I'm like, are the kids awake? No, all right, I'll call you back later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Tor. Um, uh, oh, if you, you are looking for some more information and help uh, surrounding pregnancy and miscarriage, please do look on our website. There's lots of uh, helplines there.